That being said, there are two types of formats for how to distribute your podcast, and that is the season format versus the ongoing format. Now, an ongoing format is what one that never stops as long as your podcast is in production. So talking for Tarashik, for example, I like to release these every Wednesday morning if I can, every single week if I can. Now, if it's a holiday week, I'll take off. Or if like something crazy comes up and I can't do it, I'll take a week off. But as much as I can, I want to be as consistent as I can. So I started the podcast in 2022, and I think as of this whole year, I missed three weeks, which, hey, isn't too bad. My wrestling podcast, Kings of the Rings, there are three of us. We have rotating hosts. We never miss a week. We're live every single Wednesday unless the three of us just want to take a break for a week. So, But for the most part, it's an ongoing format Um meaning it, does, it doesn't have a set beginning and an end. It just keeps going and going and going and going. This is definitely smart for if your podcast is topical, so if you're covering current events, you know, current events never stop. Um, so think of it as it can be a weekly podcast with a guest. It can be daily motivation. Some people do five-minute wake-up-in-the-morning podcast for motivation. Um, a Sunday morning talk show. Either way, the podcast has no end in sight. This keeps going. Whereas a season format... Is one that has a set beginning and an end point. So say you're doing a podcast covering The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, real- or any reality TV show, right? That season has a beginning and an end. So your podcast would follow that season. Or if it's a sports podcast, you know, the NFL season's wrapping up relatively soon, you could do a football podcast on the beginning and the end of the season, or even go into start at spring training or uh, whatever they call it, um, or like winter meetings for baseball. So anything that kind of follows a natural season, or if you have an outdoors podcast, like a fishing podcast, a fishing season near you, or a hunting season if you're a hunter, um, or just like if you just want to take a break and really focus on production, depending on your production schedule. I know one of my very first interviews on um, Talking with Tarashuk for the Ambiguous Podcast Solution was to pitch this podcast. I love those guys. They're two guys from Hofstra I went to school with. They were a lot of fun. They pretty much combine two different types of media. So, like, they mix SpongeBob and, like, Blue's Clues. And they pretty much, like, write, write a script. They play games. They, they pitch an idea for a podcast, essentially, on their podcast. So they do a season format. So they break it down where they'll do, like, a few months of recording um, and editing and then release it. And then while they're releasing it, they're recording and editing the next batch. They take a few weeks or a month and then release the next season. So that's also very popular in podcasting. Um but it really depends what you want to do. You know, you can take a small hiatus and just take a break, you know. Um, this format can be ideal if you're worried about having a time to adequately plan and produce episodes year-round. You'd rather give yourself a few months, few months to take time, pause, and plan. So it's really, it's really up to you. Personally, I think the ongoing format fits podcasting better because – it's hard to keep an audience engaged if you take breaks. So if you take a break from releasing content and you're not there for three months, your podcast is just dead for three months, and then it's a little hard for your audience to come back and get back in the swing of things. Like how I consume content, it's very cyclical. It's very on, – it's on my own schedule. I fit creators' content that I consume into my schedule. And if they're taking a break for a few months, it can be a little difficult for me to get back into the swing of things. But, I mean, I totally understand. At the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. There are ways to keep engaging with an audience. So like for, if, if I take a week or two off of talking with Tarashuk, I have a bunch of clips that I can post on TikTok and Instagram Reels and YouTube. I schedule out YouTube videos like six weeks in advance. I'm recording this on November 17th. I currently have content scheduled out every day until February. So... That's just how I do things. Uh, Christian, would you, do you prefer a season or ongoing? Well, I mean, I think I think ongoing is usually the best strategy just because it's kind of a strategy for success. Uh, consistency yeah. is key is the biggest takeaway that I'm getting everything from what you just said. Um, even examples of people, shows, TV shows, for example, that were, you know, a hit pre-pandemic. Maybe they're, you know, riding the success of having a successful first season, second season, then the pandemic hits. And, you know, maybe it wasn't until, you know, 2021, 2022, where the next season comes mid, you know, mid 2021 or, you know, beginning of 2022. And a lot of those shows, they, you know, 
they've had a hard time getting people that were very, very engaged and very excited in the first place to come back and, you know, attain the same viewership that they had originally. So I think there's a lot to, that goes with using the ongoing model. Or if you're going to be seasonal, you know, set reasonable expectations. Of course, you not you can't be talking about The Bachelor when it's not, you know, not necessarily on anymore. Yeah. But I think it's important to set those reasonable expectations. And if you can, um, you know, choose something, choose a particular topic, uh, personal, professional, as you talked about, that is ongoing because consistency is key. Mm-hmm. And it also it comes a lot down to budget. Right? Like if, you're, if you're doing a business podcast or you're, you're a business running a podcast, you know, you're going to need a budget. A good way to save money is to not release them every single week, right? It's just it just makes sense. But be consistent. Yeah, with, yeah, with exactly. that, you know, yeah. if you're gonna do every other week, do every other week. If if you know the reason is you know budget reasons, trying to be budget conscious and you know take some time off. But now your viewers have an expectation; they're not going to be looking for it the next week and be like, "What happened?" And that's how you get fall off and drop off. Yeah, it's kind of – it's hard to choose the perfect format. Like what is the perfect format? Well, everyone consumes content differently. Right. So you can you can release um, a podcast every day, and that could be very attractive to some listeners or it could be very unattractive to some listeners. Right. You know, like I, I listened to Gary V for a little bit when I was um, – actually when I was unemployed, trying to get myself motivated to get back out there. Um, Great guy, and, and keep and keep grinding. But he releases multiple podcasts every single day on his feed, and it got to the point where it's too much. I had to unsubscribe, and I kind of realized, you know, Gary Vee is kind of is very repetitive. It also depends on your topic. Exactly, depends on your topic. You know, if you're talking about maybe something that's very inspirational and happy, maybe that's something that people would like to see every single day. You know, it's gonna it's gonna depend. I mean, I think at the end of the day, not to get too deep with it, but we're creatures of habit, and you just gotta form that habit for your your audience, your listeners, your viewers, all of those things. Yeah, and for yourself. Yeah, and for yourself. So yeah, the most important thing consistently, whether you choose season it's or like what what can you commit to? Exactly. But yeah, what what can you feasibly do? What can you feasibly afford? And um, what's the gain? Like, what's what's your return? So like, um, I have someone who distributes with us at APS. Where they do a biweekly podcast and it works great for them, but they're like, "Well, how can I gain? How can I gain more listeners?" That's what they always ask me. How can I gain more viewership? Well, the first thing I say is, "You're on TikTok." No, <laughs> well, that's a problem. Um, I use podcast on video. No, that's the second problem. But the other thing is, it's like you you release biweekly, right? So like maybe if you want to get more listeners, release weekly, right? This release more often. Maybe it's just, just more. It's more content out there for people to latch on to. Yeah, your content, your audience could be wanting more. And if you if you don't know, if you don't know, I would say start releasing monthly or bi monthly, which is that's oh, why monthly or bi weekly. So once a month or every other week, because it's a lot easier to start releasing more, and it looks better if you're releasing more than if you're releasing every day and cutting back. Right. If that not, makes sense. Not necessarily a good look. Yeah. Yeah. Optics. But, again, choice is yours. Personal, professional, budget, time constraints. There's a lot of factors to consider. There is no magic wand. Just do what works best for you.